Hey guys, and welcome back to Tom Time Tea. This is your host, C.T. Russell, here with a discussion video. Why I think Percy Jackson would make an amazing animated series. I know, Percy Jackson was already adapted into a movie, and the movie did really poorly for a number of reasons. Low budget, terrible effects, large deviations from source material. I could go on, but that's not the main point of this video. Unfortunately, the rights to adapt the Percy Jackson novels has already been sold, and I doubt Fox is going to dust it off the shelf to give it another go. But Disney may be acquiring it through their buyout of Fox, so you never know if that goes through. We'll see. It looks like it will. Hmm. This video is more for fun anyways. Although I did see a tweet about it recently, which was strange because I was already starting to write the script when I saw it. Personally, I am a huge fan of action cartoons. The original Teen Titans, Avatar The Last Airbender, Steven Universe, etc. And Percy Jackson just fits right in. I mean, a boy with superpowers and limited adult supervision? It's perfect! One of the more minor annoyances from the movies, compared to the rest of the blunders, was how different the characters appeared physically from the books. This was in part because the characters were aged up so that the movie makers wouldn't have to deal with child actors. In the books, Percy Jackson is 12 years old. This age is important because it's the beginning of adolescence. It's also when his smell starts to change. From a storytelling perspective, this makes sense. It's the cause of the inciting incident. So by aging up the characters, it took out the problem of the child actors, but it added a more major issue of ripping holes into the narrative. Plus, how hard is it to have Annabeth have blonde hair? In animation, the age of the characters is not an issue. There are plenty of adults that voice child characters. Hell, Nancy Cartwright has been the voice of Bart and Simpson for decades now. Adventure Time showed that it is possible to have a decent child voice actor and have that character grow alongside the voice actor. Jeremy Shada has gone on to voice act in other roles, such as in the new Voltron reboot. Animation would make the character's age a non-issue. One of the reasons why Percy Jackson is such a popular series is the tone, which the movie fell flat in trying to show if they did at all. However, there are so many excellent examples of animated shows that are able to take the time to blend both action and humor. Avatar The Last Airbender being the most prime example. That show goes from comedic scenes involving a cabbage salesman to full-on war. That's what I think of when I think of Percy Jackson. The need to be able to switch between action and comedy seamlessly. A major issue with the movie adaptations is that they needed to find a way to condense the story into a two-hour movie. Unless you're Peter Jackson, of course. But, meh. Anyways, movie version of Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief had to decide what was important enough to stay. Of course, most fans would argue that the majority of the book is important. There's a lot of truth to that. Most authors have a point to each scene. Percy's journey was significantly cut down to make room for other scenes. However, that defeated the purpose of his journey. It was meant to feel like an odyssey, a long journey with many things thrown in his way as possible. The movie decided to have a lot more direct reason for all of his monster fights, which was not authentic to the story and caused way too many issues to the overall story. This made it not have the same feel. An animated series would have a much longer time to explore the story and give each area the time it deserves. Let's get on to the more practical side of things. How expensive the fight scenes are. CGI battles can be pretty expensive, even if they look pretty terrible on screen. I bet the battle with the Hydra ate up a lot of the budget, even though A, it was not in the books, and B, looked awful. Yes, animation is expensive, but writers have a lot more freedom with animation to have wild and crazy transformations and battles without adding a lot to the total budget of the show. The Incredibles 2 is a great example of the quality of action that can be portrayed in animation. The battle scenes in Incredibles 2 was better than a lot of the live superhero action films that we've seen this year, and just in general. Though animation as a medium of forced storytelling is typically looked down on, the medium can be used in so many creative ways. One only needs to look to Heo Miyazaki to confirm this fact. Miyazaki is an anime film director who was able to break into the Academy Awards, winning Best Animated Picture with his movie Spirited Away. This is an amazing feat and one that has not been replicated by any other foreign film in this category. 
He shows how to make use of the medium through his use of character designs, gorgeous settings, realistic feeling camera angles. To anyone who thinks of animation as lesser, I encourage you to watch Miyazaki's works, particularly Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, Kiki's Delivery Service, and especially Princess Mononoke. Percy Jackson is the perfect candidate for an animated series. Plus, there's enough material to keep the series going for a long time, and spin-off series for after. Honestly, I feel like it would be a great investment for anyone who decides to go for it. It would be a slam dunk for the company. Just think of the merch, think of everything that you can make money off of this for. Well, these were just my thoughts, and I would love to hear yours. What is your favorite cartoon show? What book do you want to see adapted into a movie or TV show? Would you watch an animated Percy Jackson series? Let me know in that comment section below. Thanks guys, I'll see you later!